Hey, everybody. Thanks very much for hanging out and swinging by once again with us. Conversations. We're really thrilled to have you. Excited about the month we have ahead in April. We're really excited about our guest today. Um, she is the epitome of somebody that believes in increasing consumption by working hard at it. She's been a prime example of that. So I couldn't think of a better person to bring on and to join us. Uh, please, everybody, give it up for the Vice President of Marketing for the California Avocado Commission. Please welcome my friend, Jan Delizer. Jan, welcome to the show. Thank you, Todd. It's really, really good to see you again and, and good to be with you today. Thank you. It's absolutely my pleasure. You know, I, I'm, I'm a huge fan of what you've done, and, and I would love for you just to share with everybody a little bit before we get into my 397,000 questions like I always have for everybody. Um, just give everybody a little bit of your journey and bio and, and what you've been up to. Yeah, so I, I grew up in Kansas. You would think I'd be working for the Grain Council or something like that, but um, went to University of Kansas. Got oh, a Jayhawks. Degree. Yeah, Rock Chalk Jayhawk. I uh, got a degree in journalism, and um, my senior year at trade and magazine class, a, a gentleman that was the publisher of the Packer newspaper showed up and, and spoke, and so Jim Connell was his name, and wow. uh, I thought, man, this guy's talking to me. He he said, we wow. like to hire people young out of college and work them hard and let them go, you know, and so I was like, okay, well, I'm going to give this a whirl. Well, I was a little ahead of my time as far as uh, them wanting to hire a woman. <laughs> so I pretty much talked my way into the job and worked for the Packer for about three years, then uh, moved to California and uh, got an offer from the Fresh Produce Council, now Fresh Produce and Floral Council. Floral Council, sure. It was uh, successful in going to work for them for about 14 years and then moved on and uh, went to work for Sun World International and then uh, back into the LA area with a broker, food, uh, produce broker, Westlake Produce. And, and then from there um, was hired to uh, actually do a merchandising position with the California Avocado Commission. And from, you know, that was in 98. So October of 98, I started with the commission as a merchandiser and uh, vice President of Merchandising came in 2000, and 2003 was Vice President of, of Marketing, and have done that ever since. And, you know, honestly, Todd, when I went there, I thought, oh, I'm going to meet some people, and it'll be my next move, right? And uh, it's it's ended up, it's probably where I'll end my career, you know? So it's a great place. Well, you started at such an iconic time, and, you know, having myself been around way, you know, back then, I was going to say way back then, but I just did, I guess, <laughs> nonetheless, but, you know, Avocados were, you know, quite frankly, they were just avocados, right? It's been, there's been a birth and there's been a rebirth and a rekindling and all this, which we're going to get into later and in some of the questions I have for you. But, you know, I, quite frankly, you were pivotal in that. You were pivotal in the conversation around increasing consumption. And I think that if, you know, of, of the commissions and boards and things that are out there, I look at what you've done in your body of work as somebody that led that charge, um, in that process of increasing consumption, right. And having those conversations with consumers. Yeah, you know, it's interesting because the the commission has been very supportive. We we have a board of directors that's comprised of growers and some handlers and then the staff is, you know, we've we've got people who work on the admin side of things and then people who work on the industry affairs side of things representing yeah. growers and their interests and then we do the marketing and it, it's by and large a marketing organization basically. It's about 70% of our budget goes into marketing, but it's been interesting to watch the consumption of avocados, because you, you hit that on the head. And I know we're going to talk about it later, but it's it's really gone up exponentially. And it's, it's unbelievable. It's, it's been a privilege. I mean, when I started with the commission, we were 85 percent market share. So that was in 98. And now, you know, if you look at California avocados in the overall category of avocados, we're, we're probably 10, maybe as much as 15 percent you know, of, of market share. And that's, that's an amazing story. And then for the industry to be as viable as it is and the value of the crop to be as viable as it is, it's, it's been a, it's, it's been really um, rewarding to have the opportunity to work for the group. Absolutely. I get so let's talk about a little bit, because, you know, <clears throat> avocados are an interesting topic. You know, if you go back, they date back a long, long way. It's food of the Aztecs. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Avocates. I mean, the avocates, you know, um, the first guacamole, which wasn't called guacamole, was was created from them. I mean, it's all over the globe. Uh, you know, you go to what is it, Indonesia, and they've got a blend of coffee and avocado as a drink. I mean, there's all kinds of different stuff that it is. But, you know, it's interesting when you think about going back to, you know, the Aztecs, quote unquote, food of the gods type of a thing. And avocados are in that conversation. So with that being said, let's go back. I want to go back a little bit and just kind of give everybody a little bit like, you know, what is the Avocado Commission? 
and really its primary function. Let's let's get that part out there so people can kind of understand where we're going from there. So the the commission was created um, in 1978. And it was created for the purpose, it, it was actually an evolution of the California Advisory uh, Board. Mm-hmm. And it became a commission because it wanted to do marketing. It wanted to be able to invest in marketing. So it's funded by the growers of California avocados. And there's about 3,000 growers of, of California avocados. Um, and, and then we, we basically just serve as the official voice of the California avocado grower. Um, we represent California avocados on the Buy California Marketing Agreement uh, group right, um, right. within the Hass Avocado Board. You know, we're active with that. There was a period of time where we actually managed. I mean, the, the Hass Avocado Board was created uh, right as I was starting with the commission. And, and it was designed at the time to be kind of a self-standing organization that was going to represent everybody, but but there was a clause written into the um, promotion order that allowed each individual entity to create their own function. So Chile, Mexico, Peru, Colombia, they've all, they've all, they manage their own organizations and all of that, that's an, it's a complicated situation, but we've got growers funding the California promotion organization. And then we've also got Hass Avocado Board funds. So we get 85% of the funds that go into the Hass Avocado Board because USDA has oversight over our programs and what we do and what we say, how we say it. We're not, we're not allowed to compare, you know, with other items and, and degrade other items or other sources of supply. So we all kind of work together to build the category and it's it's been successful. I mean, the avocado story is an amazing story. No two ways about it. So 3,000 growers in California, that's a lot of growers. I mean, you know, obviously California is a big ag state, no doubt about it, right? I don't have to dispute that. But when you think about 3,000 growers, that's, you know, that's a lot of people. I don't know how many, you know, and that comparison, I don't know the number, maybe you do, but you think about how many guys are out there growing, let's say lettuce today in California. Is it 3,000? I don't know. Yeah. You know, and, you know it's lot, interesting. Yeah. On the acreage, it's, uh, it's over 50,000 acres. Yeah. of avocados. So, you know, you do the math and the, you know, the, the average grower is, is not a huge grower. There's, there's many avocado growers who also grow citrus and sure. items like that, you know, or blueberries and things like that. So you've got, you've got diversity uh, amongst our growers, as well as some growers who just simply focus on avocados. I love it. Well, I'll talk, I'm going to kind of stick on the commission for just a second. I mean, you know, you talked about the primary function early on was really a marketing board, but, you know, and with that, and it's such a broad statement, marketing is such a broad word, right? But, you know, really your, your, your focus is about increasing consumption. That's, I mean, yeah. that's the driver, right? And I, you know, and you talked a little bit about how it's funded. Now, I want to get a little bit more of that so people kind of understand how these boards work as far as the funding goes. So how is it funded? It's funded off of every case. Is it funded by what passes through retail? Can you kind of explain that a little bit? Thanks for joining the Todd Versation. And now a word from our sponsor. Hi, this is Dr. Gary Beal, CEO and co-inventor of NaturWrap, a revolutionary coating designed to extend shelf life and cut food waste. Thank you for listening to Todd Versations and Todd Bits. Food waste is a worldwide pressing topic. Here are some of the facts that you need to know. Food waste takes up more room in landfills than anything else. In the United States, we discard more food than any other country, about 80 billion pounds per year. Food waste contributes to 11% of the world's greenhouse gas emissions. At Nabucco, we're revolutionizing the produce industry with our OMRI-approved NaturaWrap edible coating. Our goal is to reduce food loss, improve profitability, and elevate sustainability. We're in the business of bringing fresher produce to tables around the world. Check us out at NabucoInc.com. So it's interesting because the California funding is based on value. So we do, this year, the assessment rate is 1.75% of the value per pound. Um, so, you know, we end up getting, I, I, I looked at the number yesterday. I think it was about, oh, I'm going to say it's seven, 7,500 or 7.5 million, excuse me, dollars, um, that are from the California grower. And then we get about $6 million from the Hass avocado board, uh, right. percentage, the way that works. But basically, I mean, when you talk about marketing, it, you're talking about 
conducting advertising to mm-hmm. make people aware. And, and we've, you know, we talked about how the, the market share was 85% in 98 and is now roughly 10%. And if you, you think about that, that's, that's forced us to really, every year we evaluate where are we going to focus our attention? How are we right. going to go to market? You know, and years ago, we would do a lot of outdoor and we would do a lot of general market radio. And now we're doing much more social and digital. We're doing some outdoor um, and we're doing some videos and we work a lot with retailers uh, to, to make sure that customers know who's carrying California avocados, when they're carrying them. And, um, and so we work on that. So the advertising is part of it. There's promotions where we'll do in-store promotions or display contests and things like that. There's consumer public relations, there's trade public relations, and then there's marketing research because we want to always be um, keeping our finger on the pulse of what's working with our customers, whether it's retail, whether it's food service, or whether it's the end user, the consumer. Well, yeah, hundred percent. And I love what you said about retail, making the consumer aware. Because you know, it, it, let's face it, you go to the grocery store it can be a very overwhelming experience. It's very hard to message in a grocery store. So much of the messaging is just solely reliant on what you put on your label or your packaging. Yeah. Yeah. A little tough to do with an avocado. I mean, it's just a little tough to do. Um, and to be able to get out there like you guys do, um, and I think again it goes back to what I said earlier about this consumption thing. You're making people stop and pause and think. And I think that not only does it translate to what the avocados are, but it's making them think about consumption as a whole in the department. So I think that your tentacles, you know, you're driving positivity above and beyond avocados based on what I'm seeing you guys do, because you do make people kind of stop. And I love that about your strategy that you have out there, because, you know, I always say back you know, in my day, it's like, you know, I, my first goal was to get you to buy an avocado. Then my second goal was to convince you to eat the organic one. Right. Yeah. That was my that was my <laughs> shtick. Right. But bottom line, it all comes down to consumption. We've got to get people thinking more and more about the positivity that fruits and vegetables have in their lives, and we need more of them in there. You talk a little bit about your customers on your website, and we we talked about this a little bit, and I want to lean into that because um, you really that you you really have five customers that you service, and I'd like for you, if you wouldn't mind, just to touch on them a little bit so people can kind of understand how you view the industry in the world. I mean, you know, your five unique customers are really consumers, growers retailers, food service, and then chefs. Um, in any order you want to go, however, I mean, can you kind of talk about how you feel about those and just kind of give a little perspective on how what your view is and, and how you guys work with those groups? Yeah, so you were kind enough to send over kind of the top line of, of thinking. And, and so I, I made a few little annotations on the the customers, oh, just so you know. So go, girl, go. When, when it comes to the growers, you know, we represent the growers. The commission represents the growers. So they're not really a customer per se, but our goal is to help them have a business that keeps them in business and keeps them viable. And so that's why we we work to build the demand for their fruit and let customers know, consumers know where they are. So the growers, that's that's one audience. One that you didn't list because I what I did was I combined food service and chefs mm-hmm. and added packer shippers. So the handlers are an important part of what we do. Sure. Because we don't actually sell the fruit. So we spend a lot of time in the preseason connecting with handlers, talking about you know, who our targets are going to be and who the commission, the, the retail marketing directors and the food service team, who they're going to call on and mm-hmm. when they're going to call on them. And we want to make sure that we're aligned with the source of supply. So, you know, we're, we're not into going in and promoting avocados per se. We're into promoting California avocados when they're available. So right. we work with the handlers to do that. Um, retailers are an important, um, you know, avenue. They're like that, the final, what, 10 feet before you hit right. the consumer. So they're very, very important. We work directly with retailers to set up promotions and customized marketing that's specifically tailored for California avocados. And then we also target these uh, the activities with the retailers that are loyal to California that have expressed loyalty. So many of them are on the West Coast. Many of them mm-hmm. are in Oregon. Many of them are in California. But we've got some that are in St. Louis and some that are, you know, in, in markets east in Iowa and places like that. So that's um, that's an, they're an important uh, customer of ours. And then food service operators and chefs. I, I merged those because that's basically when we call on them. 
we're calling on some chefs, but we're also calling on food service operators. And the, the commission has to work really far in advance with these people because they set their promotions up very early on. So during our off season, our food service team is, is conversing with uh, food service operators and chefs trying to get ideas. We do menu ideation that mm-hmm. is really cool. So we've got a chef, um, Jason Hernandez, who works with us and he'll go in and he'll, he'll look at the operation the back room, what they've got in their kitchen. And then he comes up with recipes that would work for them with featuring California avocados. And then he'll do a demo to the powers that be with the individual operations. So that's really cool. And then when it comes to consumers, I mean, thank goodness. I mean, especially during COVID that, that all of the, you know, we had so many ways to reach out to consumers to help them understand how they could use California avocados at home, how they, how they, you know, just could do, make, make easy menus or complicated menus, whatever it is they, they chose to do. So it's, it's really with the consumer, it's about building that preference for, uh, for the California avocado and then their loyalty to it. And, you know, I, I mean, I'll just tell you, Todd, that when our fruits in season, I eat a lot more avocados. I eat avocados year round, but I eat a lot more when we're in season just because they're so good. No, there's no two ways about it. I mean, it's amazing to see, you know, that the work that you guys have done. I mean, you you really have led by example and, you know, you demonstrate how a commission, you know, should operate. There's no two ways about it. And I think that my next question kind of frames this up. It's, you know, how many avocados are consumed today versus (laughs) 10 years ago? Right. And, that, and and granted, now look, I mean, people are planting more. Don't get me wrong, but they're planting more because people are seeking them out, not because they're just throwing them out to the ethos and say, you know, there's plenty of growers that throw crap out there thinking, well, let's hope it sticks. You guys yeah. aren't quite that way. You're to tree. Right. It's not it's not drilling a seed and comes up in 60 days. It's a tree. So, you know, what is what is the difference between now and 10 years ago? Yeah, if you look at if you I, I, I'll give you some time frame. So if you look at the average annual per capita consumption has tripled between 2001 and 2018. So it went from two pounds per person to an average of eight. And I know it's higher than that now. Um, I just don't have the latest figures uh, at at my ready. Um, Category volume has also increased. So it went from 500 million pounds in 2000 to about 3 billion pounds in 2021. And if you look at avocados, um, there's room for more growth. So that eight sure. pounds per capita consumption, that's what is that? It's like 16 avocados a year. And I know I eat more than that. I'm sure you eat more than that. Yeah, I love um, them. But I think the avocado story, it, it just defies ag economic gravity, right? I mean, to see the volume go up the way it has and to have the value maintain itself. And, and I know this year was a l- little bit unusual because going into the Super Bowl, there was there, w- there was high value out of Mexico, higher than it had been. And some of that was the inflation related to COVID and all of that. But some of it is just based on demand. And Absolutely. You know, yeah. So that's, I, I just think the story is one that it, it, I don't feel like we've at all hit, you know, um, um, the, the goal of consumption. We've got more to do. Well, I, yeah. I, well, look, it's a great, it, there's so many things to do. It's such a great item, but you know, when you go in the grocery store and you go into the big stores, you know, you go to the big box guys, avocados aren't just, you know, a little two foot <laughs> wide space. They're end caps. And there, there are six different spots that avocados may float around. Right. And they really lean into it. And to your point, because of that. But I think, you know, so much of what you guys have done that really impresses me is what you put up on your website. I mean, it truthfully, it is a little bit off the chain at how deep you guys go. And I say that with, you know, with all the love and respect to the world, because it's really impressive. But, you know, it's full of information, you know, whether it be about lifestyle choice, you know, avocado 101, the countless amount of recipes to you said, whether you got easy recipes, hard recipes, when I mean, you've got, you know, you've got a recipe for every night of the week times 50, right, which is fantastic. Yeah. But, you know, that website's almost become now a destination. And I think not only for consumers in that respect, but for the industry itself to learn from, how can we do it? How can dietitians at the retail store, to your point, in Missouri, lean into this information to try to increase consumption? So, you know, that commitment you guys have done is, is really quite impressive, to say the least. So has a commitment, you know, as, as far as the last couple of years, has the industry voice changed a little bit over the past few years, do you think? Um, because of COVID, because of eating more at home? Do you feel like that there's avocados are kind of like on an upswing now again, just because of being at home? You know, it's interesting. We saw um, 
bagged avocado sales, they were already on the rise going into the pandemic, but they definitely picked up during the pandemic. And that I think was, you know, emblematic of the consumer just wanting to get in and get out of a store or if they were going to order online, that type of thing. Um, but but our, our voice hasn't changed. I think, I, I think, you know, when you look at California avocados, we really, we really have focused on um, putting our support behind where the fruit is. And so we're, we're, we really are not about growing the category. We're about being part of a category that's right. growing. Yeah. Um, but we are really about promoting California avocados. So, I, you know, I, I don't think there's been that much of a change in our voice. I, I do think we've maximized ways to get to the consumer directly sure. during the pandemic because we wanted to be helpful. We weren't about trying to promote our brand. We were right. really wanting people to understand that, hey, if you're going to be stuck at home, here's some great recipes, you know, and and we spent a lot of time, we redid our website. Uh, it, it was after the pandemic started, but it was last year, basically. And so it's really positive to hear you say the the kind remarks that you have about the website. It's a it's a great site. I mean, it really is. I mean, if you you know if you want an example of of really how to uh, build a website that is going to touch people, it's going to touch anybody that wants to go on there. No matter who you are, what sector you're in, it's going to speak to you some way somehow. You're going to find what you're looking for it, it, it based in the lane that you're actually coming into. So I think it's really cool myself. And let me before I forget, CaliforniaAvocado.com. I'm going to throw it out there. That Make sure you get that sucker out. CaliforniaAvocado.com. That's right. I want to switch gears a little bit and talk about something that, you know, I know is important to you. It's extremely important to me, and that's food waste and consumption. And I'm a big believer, you know, and I love to see all these companies that are out trying to tackle food waste problems and creating technology and data and all these things. I mean, I, I think it's an important thing to be looking at. I look at it as a positive cost of food to try to better understand how we could do, you know, do better for ourselves. But one of the areas that I really believe in is that one of the best ways to eliminate food waste is to work to increase consumption, yeah. right? And I know that you would agree with me on that. Um, and your work really focuses on increasing consumption as much as it does awareness. I think we just kind of touched about that with the website. So how do you feel about working to increase consumption, you know, as a part of that food waste conversation? You, you personally, how does that, I mean, how does that re resonate with you? I, you know, there's, there's certain parts of the avocado that are, are, I mean, like the pit, you know, yeah. there's, there's things you can do with the pit and then this, this, the, uh, skin, I mean, the, the outer skin. So there's, there's a little bit of a challenge there when it comes to avocados, but when you look at the commission, you know, our work with the chefs and dietitian and influencers, we're, we're really, um, we're really trying to remove the food waste by increasing consumption. And so, um, that's really important. And then I think helping consumers understand how to manage the ripening of mm -hmm. the avocado once they get it home and then how to store it, that, that is a really useful tool. We, we just are in the process of creating a bag that we're going to make available to people in the industry that on the back of the bag, the bag header or bag strap, it, it basically talks about how to manage that ripening. And, you know, then how to store the avocado. So that I think is good. And then, you know, I, I, you, you can't minimize the amount of damage that's done in transportation and handling of product, yeah. right? Yeah. And so I think the very nature of the California avocado being in California and, and we're really focused on staying close to home for the most part, I think that helps eliminate food waste as well. Yeah, for sure. No, I mean, look, you, you go across the country and you've got, you know, tomatoes and avocados, you know, up on the wet rack at, you know, 36 degrees, yeah. just not necessarily in their best interest. Right. So you're right. I mean, we need, to, I, I definitely agree with that. And I appreciate your comments on, on, on food waste and, you know, consumption, because I think it's just a huge topic that, that we all need to lean into. I mean, it, and I use, forgive the pun, it's low hanging fruit yeah. to work in unison to increase consumption. You know, what could that, is that a 30% bump if we all worked hard at it? Is it a 10% bump across the board for every, I mean, so to me, I think it's really worthy, which is why I'm super excited to have you on here because this is, you know, when I look back and, and you know, 1998, you started, and I look at where you've taken from a strategic standpoint, the California Avocado Commission and where it is, 
you guys, again, you, you set the benchmark for increasing consumption because it's what it's the world in which you live. And I, it's, it's, it's really commendable. And I hope everybody gets over to California, californiaavocado.com and checks out the work because it certainly is worthwhile. I want to kind of lean into this consumption thing a little bit, but I want to flip over to health just a touch um, because, you know, obviously there's a difference out there today between shoppers five, six, seven years ago than today. We've had, you know, the pandemic, have more people eating at home. Um, health has now become a much bigger part. I think people realize food is medicine. It can hurt you as much as it can help you. Um, is there attributes along the lines of health now when it comes to an avocado that matter more to people today than perhaps maybe you we thought years ago or maybe more than even maybe more than you leaned into years ago? I think I think people are definitely aware of health and wellness and and striving to do more. And I think when it comes to avocados, California avocados specifically, um, the fact that it's a heart healthy superfood, you know, is is worthy of note. And I think yeah. it's good. I mean, I think the fact that it's monounsaturated fats, so the fats that are good for you, not saturated fats. Um, the the calorie count on an, you know, one third of a medium avocado is like 80 calories, but it's satisfying, right? So right. if you if you eat that you're going to be satisfied. You're also going to get 20 vitamins and minerals um, that, that make it a nutrient dense choice. So that's obviously a good thing to have. Um, I think, you know, we did research years ago and, and uh, the research demonstrated that avocados can act as a nutrient booster as well. Hmm. So if you eat an avocado, say with a tomato, you may absolutely, you may actually absorb more of the vitamins from the tomato than you would if you were eating it on its own. Um, so I think that's that's good. I you know the fact that avocados are uh, naturally sodium, cholesterol, and trans fat free all all good points. They've got a good source of fiber, so that's a positive as well. Um, they're diabetic friendly, and they're included in the uh, keto, paleo, and low carb diets. So you right. know, they're they're getting uh, coverage there. Diet rich in potassium uh, helps to offset the harmful effects of sodium on blood pressure. So that's a positive. Um, and yeah, they're just, they're good for you. That's the, you yeah, know, and, no and doubt. we've got all of the influencers and the dietitians that we work with, you know, to a, every last one of them, no matter where they're located, they love the avocado for all the healthful benefits that it has. Yeah. There's not a lot of bad things to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> there's just not, you know, I, I mean, bottom line. And I think something interesting too, that folks don't realize, you know, when it comes to California avocado is that, um, what a great baby food they are. Yes. And how great they are for kids, you know, as almost a first food in a lot of ways. And and I know kids are such an important part of the shopping process, you know, and I think that people don't, you know, I think years ago, we never thought that way. Quite frankly, we just, yeah. we, I, you know, truthfully, I mean, I think you would agree with me that it wasn't that now it's like, oh, crap, this, this is legit. We need to be thinking about that. And kids are great influencers. We know that now. You know, how much do you think their impact is on parents buying habits when it comes to California yeah. avocados? Do you think they're in the game? It's interesting because when my kids were little and I worked at the Fresh Produce, then Fresh Produce Council, I used to do a, a, a seminar every year at their elementary school. They'd bring in all the kids. So they'd bring the third through sixth graders or the K through third graders. And, and it was hilarious because forevermore, I mean, even today, if some of the, my kids' friends see me, they call me the fruit lady because <laughs> that's what they remember. And, and the reason that I did that at the time was in hopes of exposing them to a fruit or vegetable that they may not have seen that when they're in the grocery store with their parents, they say, Hey, buy this, you know, take this home. Um, so, but yeah, there's, there's no doubt. I mean, the, the commission years ago before my time worked with uh, Dr. Bill Sears, who was Dr. Sears was big into promoting avocados as baby's first food. He was a pediatrician. His yeah. son is, is now a pediatrician in Orange County and, and still c promotes avocado consumption. Um, but it's, it's been a big part. And I think, you know, as baby's first food, it's important. You know, I, unfortunately, I'm a grandmother of two and I've got, they both loved avocados, at, you know, from the get-go. And then the, the texture, it's like bananas and avocados. They both kind of have, have uh, gotten off of them. But for the most part, I will tell you that yeah. kids love avocados and it's a great first baby food. It's, it's one that's promoted by nearly every pediatrician, at least that I know. And I think there's a, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of opportunity there because those, those, 
babies grow into toddlers, grow into children, grow into whatever the next gen is going to be. Well, and, and they and, get an ATM and, yeah, card and, and they're they buying are, their own groceries. Purchase. So they're not only having influence on the purchasers of today, but they're having influence on the next day as well. Thanks for joining the Todd Versation. And now a word from our sponsor. Hi, this is Dr. Gary Beal, CEO and co-inventor of NaturaWrap, a revolutionary coating designed to extend shelf life and cut food waste. Thank you for listening to Todd Versations and Todd Bits. Food waste is a worldwide pressing topic. Here are some of the facts that you need to know. Food waste takes up more room in landfills than anything else. In the United States, we discard more food than any other country, about 80 billion pounds per year. Food waste contributes to 11% of the world's greenhouse gas emissions. At Nabico, we're revolutionizing the produce industry with our OMRI-approved NaturaWrap edible coating. Our goal is to reduce food loss, improve profitability, and elevate sustainability. We're in the business of bringing fresher produce to tables around the world. Check us out at NavicoInc.com. You know, I think too, sometimes when it comes to something, you know, like California avocados, people just get, it's got to have a chip with it. It's got to be in the guacamole bowl. And it's so much greater than that. I mean, my God, look at the, look at avocado toast. I mean, it's, yeah. where can't you buy that anymore? Right. I mean, it's, it's, it's really changed. At 14, been, 16, $18, right? <laughs> yeah, no doubt. <laughs> but you know, it's, it's, it's amazing though how much it's really has asserted itself into the food service industry, you know, people's everyday lives, the, the big box stores. I mean, it's, 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 you know, California, avocado, it's powerhouse. You yeah. know, it's, it's really, it's a very legit deal. And you start to think about the fact that you can go back to kids and work your way all the way up. That's a wonderful customer base to be working with. You know, it, as we're, as we're talking, you know, coming out here this month, you know, we're coming up on, on Cinco de Mayo, we're coming up on, uh, you know, I don't know if it's number one or number two, but it's going to be my question for you. So how does the Super Bowl, you know, type of deal compare with Cinco de Mayo for demand and excitement when it comes to avocados? Yeah, so I know we're we're knocking on the door here of, of Cinco de Mayo. And, you know, it, it, there's actually three holidays. So I'm going to broaden it just a little bit. So oh, what I leave Bowl, out? Yeah, <laughs> Cinco de Mayo and the 4th of July. And, and oh, so yeah. the 4th of July, interestingly enough, uh, kind of became a factor and has, has had some good good pulls and it's right in the heart of our season. And it's also, you know, we started it, we started to promote around the 4th of July because of the loyalty to American holidays and all of that. So it's, it's been a, it's been a good performer, but the, the, you know, if you're talking about Super Bowl or Cinco de Mayo or 4th of July, it's really, how's the supply at the time, you know, which mm -hmm. one is number one. So Super Bowl traditionally ranks number one, but there have been years where, July 4th and or Cinco de Mayo has has outdone it. Wow. Um, this year we're looking at, at good supplies for Cinco and we're anticipating excellent promotions. We're we're focused as a commission on the retail aspect. That's not to say that some food service operators won't have guacamole and mention of, you know, Cinco de Mayo in their in their restaurants, but it's really hard for them to gear up for one day. Um, they like they like the broader events. So um, but it's it's much like it's much like Super Bowl and from the standpoint that everybody thinks to have guacamole, you know, and, and some people think, hey, I'll have that avocado in a salad on avocado toast or whatever way they're going to eat it. So it's it's popular. Oh, there's no two ways about it. And, you know, to be honest, I didn't even think about Fourth of July. I mean, that is a major, major family eating holiday. But, you know, it's, it's kind of funny. You know, you think about it. And I wonder how many other people actually pop that into their mind. It's like, you know, we, we think about Thanksgiving, we think about Christmas, we think about Super Bowl, but 4th of July is, is probably bigger than a lot of people give it credit for. I'm, I'm being humbled right now saying, yeah, I didn't put two and two together on that equation, but it is, it actually is a, it's a pretty, pretty popular, pretty popular way to, to spend a day. There's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of one day events like St. Patrick's Day because of the green, it, it's got some avocado, you know, capability sure. for promotion and Labor Day is also a big, big consumption event. So, um, but there's, there's lots of, there's just, there's nothing but opportunity, right? To grow the consumption of avocados. Oh, I love it. You know, we talked, you talked a little bit about the positive attributes of, of, you know, all the, all the pluses when it comes to California avocados. And I think it, it, it's worth mentioning, or I just want to come back to the thought process that 
when it comes to consumers in, in today's world, based upon where we have been over the last couple of years, how important I think it is for people to lean into foods that are positive when it comes to health and the wellness strategy. And, you know, California avocados are leading that charge. And I just want to make sure that we covered it and make sure that we got it out there, that people are leaning into that a little bit, because I think it's, um, I think it's incredibly important that we, that we start to talk about foods that make a difference. You know, um, I would rather, I'd rather see a commercial for California avocados than I would for a, you know, some kind of a sugar soda in front of kids, you know, TV. Right. So sure. I just think it's super important to that. And if there's anything, I just want to make sure we got it. If there's anything else you want to throw out on the gauntlet down and say, Hey, FYI, let's get these, you know, here because of this, let's say it, because I, I just think I, it is a part yeah. of the health and wellness. Yeah. I think, you know, I, I think we've said it. It's, it's very, it's just a very healthy choice and it's very versatile. That's what we, that's what we love about the California avocado is the versatility. Yeah. No, okay. So here's a question for you. What's your, what's your favorite junk food? Now that you're you know, talking about uh, what's your favorite junk food? Come on, throw it out here. Junk avocado. food. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you're talking total junk food, total I, I junk have a, food. A, a candy bar that I really like that I, I don't it. eat very often. It's got avocado it's, in it? It, it? it doesn't. It's chocolate and I don't even know what it, caramel and some oh, crunchy I love stuff. It. But 100, 100, I think it, I don't even know what it's called. I think it's called the $100,000 bar or something. $100,000 like bar. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's old but school. I, but if you, if you talk about good foods that are good for you. I, I personally like just eating an avocado out of the shell. I, I don't have to do anything to it. I don't have to put balsamic on it. I don't have to do salt. I just, I like a good avocado out of the shell. Yeah. We, same here at the house. We have them at the house. We buy them and, you know, we buy them and we try to you know, cut them in half, split them, whatever. And it's a great snack in the morning. It's, 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 it's great on the go snack. Yeah. Um, you know, and I think that when you start to look back from my perspective, we said earlier, you start to look back at all the positivity that's associated with California avocados and what's going on. It's not a hard snack to put on your counter for your kids and for your family. It's just not, Yeah. you know, and to your point, teach them how to use it right. And you know, how to ripen it and do the whole nine nine. It's going to last forever. I yes, love it. Exactly. I think it's just absolutely fantastic. I, you know, as we wrap up our time hanging out here together a little bit, you know, I always kind of reflect on, the people that I have on, especially you, I've known you for a long time, the people we have on, what their mission, what their journey is and something. And something that really um, touches me about, you know, your passion and what you've done is that, you know, you really have blazed a trail for a lot of people. Um, you know, the work that you've done, you know, increasing consumption certainly falls into everything we're about, talk about all the time on this broadcast and everything, of course, we're really leaning into for the month of April. But you've made such a positive difference by the way you've you know, in created engagement and excitement around California avocado. So I'm going to throw a little final question at you a little bit. If you could just give a young brand out there a piece of advice on building a great brand and how to be and who to be and what to lean into, what would that advice be? Do you think? Yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a big question, right? I, I know. Mean, a huge question. You know, you had you had sent me over, uh, as I mentioned, some things beforehand. And one of the things that you asked was, um, like, what have you learned from put in practice? And so yeah. one, one of the things I thought of there was my dad's uh, advice. And he passed away in 2009. But when when I went to work, one of the things he said to me was, do the five things you want to do least first, and you'll never procrastinate. And so, you know, when I think about branding and making an, an item available, you know, you, you want to look at the things that just are going to turn you on your ear, you know, and you want to get them done and get them out of the way. Um, I think, you know, I, I think to, to build a brand, you want to be in tune with what you have to offer. You, you got to know your product and then you, you want to, you want to let the people that are the decision makers know about that product. And then you just want to support the heck out of them to, you know, to, to make it available. And, you know, so all of the, all of the areas that we've gotten into, you know, with the way we've transitioned through the years and gone mm -hmm. from general market radio to uh, social and digital and things like that. And the way we're hanging gone, out with me. Yeah, exactly. Podcast. Um, you know, it's just, it's just really, um, it's an opportunity to make people aware of whatever it is that product is that you are trying to put on the map. Um, and I, you know, I just, I just think you, 
you know, flexibility is important, right? You've got to listen and you've got to be able to adjust. And boy, did the pandemic teach us all how to pivot, right? I mean, that was the, the, the big thing. So, you know, one thing I'll say, uh, Todd, about my career is when I, when I look back on the 40 plus years that I've had the opportunity to, to work in this industry and to serve this industry, I've always had support from my employers to volunteer, you know, mm-hmm. in leadership. And, and partly because I really feel that makes an individual a better individual. Absolutely. You learn about yourself. You learn about others. You meet so many people. So, you know, when I when I think about my career and if I were to give advice to someone coming into the industry, mm-hmm. I would just say, man, take advantage of every opportunity you can to volunteer. And there's some great associations. I mean, you, you last month were at the SCPC and, you know, I mean, there's 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 the regional organizations. There are the there's the national organization, the global, or, you know, there's all sorts of things and opportunities for people to get involved and, and really focused on consumption, right? I mean, building demand and, and making people want to eat more of our great items. Absolutely. What a great, what a great way to wrap this up. I mean, thank you for that. And you're hundred percent right. I mean, you know, I'm such a big believer in giving back and mentoring, which is what this platform is really truly based on is about giving back and uplifting brands and ideas and people and getting these messages out that need to be heard and, and maybe throwing some conversation out there and perspective that people haven't got. And I think your answer to my question is brilliant. And I think that, you know, the young brands that follow us and pay attention and we work with, it's sound advice, right? And I love what your dad said. That's sound yeah. advice, right? I think that's beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. That was great. My pleasure. Great. This has been a ton of fun. Did we forget anything? I mean, is there anything I need to put on the table? Do we need to get, you know, what, what, I mean, besides, you know, CaliforniaAvocado.com, get on there and get some recipes. <laughs> if you, if you wanted the social handles, I can give you the social handles. Don't lay it on me. Okay. So I'm going to read them. So I'm correct. Uh, so facebook.com forward slash California avocados. Then Twitter's at California underscore avocados. Uh, Pinterest and Instagram. I, you know, let me send them to you, Todd. Yeah, that's I fine. We'll, put, we'll put them, we'll put them, we'll connect them all. It's easy okay. to do. You got to be on social media because that's where all the cool kids are. Yeah, exactly. And one thing that I didn't mention that I should mention when you were talking about the website is um, we've got a merchandising shop. That we you do started. have swag. You have a yeah. swag store. Swag you do. Store. I saw it. Started it's it. Yeah, yeah. So we're gonna we're we're working on the the. So it all started right as the pandemic was rolling out, you know, so that part was a little all the timing, you know, you, in retrospect, you would do it when there's not a pandemic affecting you. Uh, but we finally got out to get some lifestyle shots and things like that of people wearing the swag. And, it, you know, it. it's it's awesome. So the merch shop. There's cool stuff. Uh, there's yeah, cool stuff on there. Yeah. Shop.californiaavocado.com. I love it. I, pr- I really appreciate you. I appreciate you. I appreciate your career because I've been able to see it and watch it, but I so appreciate your passion to increase consumption. And it is such an important topic that I hope everybody just takes a look at their own business and say, what are we doing to do that? Um, because again, if everybody leans into it and when, if everybody, if everybody can increase consumption by 1%, holy crap, what would that be like for our planet, our country, our health, all of it? It's so important. So I appreciate you from the bottom of my heart for being my friend and for being here and hanging out with me and sharing about California avocados and a little bit of your journey. And, and I love Pop's advice. I hope people lean into that. I think it's fantastic. We're going to blow. We're I gonna, love that we're you gonna, called him Pop. He, he was called. We all called him Pop. That's awesome. Well, there you go. I, have, I, had, I had my little connective <laughs> moment right there. I love it. I absolutely love it. I do appreciate you. And thank you for hanging out with me. My pleasure. Everybody, thanks for watching the show with us and hanging out, whether you're you know hiding under the desk from your boss at the gym, in the car, whatever it is. Lean into consumptions, guys. It's what we got to do. It's a great place to start talking about food waste and how to make a difference. Hopefully, this conversation, I know it did, inspired me to think a little harder about it. And like we say all the time, go inspire somebody. It's not hard to do. Just a simple hello will make a difference in somebody's day. And you can be responsible for that. It's fun. It's worthwhile of your time. Thanks for watching. Check us out on all the social media sites. Like I said, it's where the cool kids are. That's where we are. And uh, we'll see you on Todd Bits. We'll see you on Todd Versations. We'll just see you around. I appreciate all of you. Go eat more fruits and vegetables. Thanks, everybody.